I have an interesting lens to test, a lens that I have been wanting to test for a long time. It's the Panasonic slash Leica 10 to 25 millimeter f1.7 lens. And yeah, let's talk about this lens and how it works with an Olympus camera because it is made for Panasonic. Hi there, my name is Peter Forsgaard and I am an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about this lens, there are two things. The first thing, of course, is consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when there is a new video online. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer and about Olympus gear and this time Panasonic gear. And one disclaimer, this lens is not mine. I loaned it from Matti Sulanto. And if you know, don't know who he is, he's a Lumix ambassador with also a YouTube channel. I just got this lens, so I haven't used, I haven't made a single image yet with this, but I will. But the first thing that I noticed is that it looks huge, the lens. But then it's not actually that heavy. I think it's under 700 grams, something like that. I will put the exact number right here. And uh, in that sense, it, it is quite balanced. I actually, when, when we uh, set this meet that we will sw swap the lenses and, and Matti is having one of my lenses and I'm uh, lending this lens. I took the battery grip for my camera because I've seen pictures of this lens, but I never, never had it in my camera or in my hand. And it is actually not that big, even though it looks big. It, it's quite balanced. And of course, it's a bit way how you hold your camera, but still it is nice and balanced and very well made, like you would expect if a lens says Leica in its front element, then you suspect that it is very well made. But let's talk, talk about a few features that this lens has. I said that I'm going to talk about the features of this lens, but I don't know if a lens hood is a feature. But it's actually accessory, it comes with it, lens hood should be always on, because it has the ability to block some light hitting the front element, and it can make the image quality a lot better. And then the next thing you notice is that it has the aperture ring on the lens. And unfortunately, it does not do anything on an Olympus body. But if you have a Panasonic body, uh, I think it is also kind of like smooth, so it doesn't have any clicks. So if you're doing video with this lens, you can change the aperture without the clicking things. It doesn't make any noise and it doesn't make, you know, the jumping, the exposure, but it's nice and smooth. But unfortunately, it does not work on an Olympus body. And that's something that I've always wondered, that why when they make the consortium or whatever you call this Micro Four Third thing with Panasonic and Olympus, why they did not agree on certain things? Okay, I can understand that maybe the stabilizing thing is a, is a technology with the, which they don't want to share, but this could be something that they could share that this aperturing would work the way it works in Panasonic lenses. And also one thing is that the zoom ring goes the other way. Even though it's, it's really nice and smooth, but it's the wrong way for me because I'm used to doing it the other way. And that might be if you are in a fast situation and you want to change the focal length. It, it just might not be your thing. Let's say that you have it on 14 and you want to wider and you do it in the wrong way and you miss the shot. But that's something, maybe you get used to it or maybe you don't. But that's, that's something that they should have agreed when they, when they made the alliance or whatever you call it. And then one good thing also, it has the MF clutch, which works. It uses and works the focus peaking and the magnification works. And that's, that's a good thing. And one really great thing about also is about this focusing ring that it actually stops. It doesn't, you know, go around like in some lenses when you do the manual focus. But this is, this is really good and it's really nice and smooth and you have the scale here. And then the aperture. It's f1.7, so it's quite fast. And that's why the lens uh, front element is quite big and it's actually 77 millimeter filter thread, which is huge. Uh, I do have them because I used to have different brand cameras way back in the, in the ancient times when a mirror was a big thing in cameras. And I used to have big lenses with, which had the 77 millimeter. So I do have uh, what do you call these um, variable ND filters for this one, which 
I might try on this because this is a really really interesting lens for video because of the focal length range and it's um, it's very good because when you turn on the stabilizer and you use the, the optical and the digital which usually works better on, on the EM, uh, EM1 Mark II and other EM1 system cameras is that it will crop a bit so it, the crop isn't 2 it might be 2.3 and when you have 10 millimeters it's actually 20 and then it crops a bit it is a 24 so it's more close to 12 when you have on this lens and that's that's really good if you, if you do this vlogging style thing which I rarely do and I just mentioned about the stabilizing this lens does not have in body or in body in lens optical stabilizer but it doesn't need it it's a it's a wide angle lens or to to a standard lens zoom it doesn't really need that because you have a very very good stabilizer on Olympus body and that of course works and there's one thing I did not mention yet is that this lens is fully weather sealed so when I have it on my Olympus body the system is fully weather sealed which is really important for a lens like this which you might use on your trips even though this is a bit big for travels but for some it might be a good lens for that so what do you think so far about this lens I don't know if you have tested this or are you planning on getting one or do you have one please let us know in the comments down below it'd be interesting to hear what are your experiences on the lens and now I've talked quite a bit about this lens it's time to take some photographs too and test the video because I might even want one for video because it looks inter really interesting and when we talk about the image quality I, ha I really have to say that if, if there is a like a text on the lens I don't doubt it I know it's good but I'm heading to take some images and then I'll see you at my office with the images See you in a minute. I forgot to mention one thing. The first time I saw this lens, or it was actually a mock-up, was 2018 in Photokina. And this lens was introduced, I think, the next summer. So it's about a year and three months old lens. So it's fairly new too. And, and, but let's see how it works when I take images. I don't know if that's an image, but anyways, it's made. That was interesting. And I said I'm, that I'm going to my office, but I'm not there yet because I caught up taking some images. And I roll the images now, and then I'll talk about the image quality at my office. See you in a minute. As you saw, there is nothing wrong with the image quality with this lens. The Panasonic 10 to 25 mm f1.7 lens is a marvelous lens, and you can use it wide open with f1.7, which is, of course, whole range. So it's at the 10 mm at 1.7 and 25 mm at 1.7, and that's good for video also. But it is really good thing for uh, still photography too. And you don't have to stop down because you want better image quality. You get really good image quality excellent image quality actually with f1.7 so no need to stop down and everything is just perfect with this lens and it is really really sharp but then there is also this kind of like nice and soft touch to the image there's something about the image quality and the look what the image is kind of feel and look or look and feel of the image it's it's not something that it is really really over sharp but it's it's uh, it's um uh, i don't it's hard to explain but I, I hope you saw that character in those images that i showed you but let's go back outside all right that was an interesting experience to test some panasonic lenses i haven't tested other brand lenses that much i know i should because the good thing about Micro Four Thirty is that there is quite a lot of selection of different lenses and especially this one because olympus doesn't really have a lens that matches this focal length or the 
fastest aperture. There is the 7 to 14 millimeter f2.8 lens, but it's a it's a bit different lens than this. And I think this is more usable in a way that you can use this in many better ways than you can 7 to 14, which is a really, really great lens for landscape. But this is more versatile, and and I really hope that there will be a Mzuiko lens that matches this someday. But it was a really interesting experience and I don't know, Matti probably wants this back so I, I unfortunately have to take this back. While I take this lens back, you can watch this video where I... The, it's a playlist of other than Mzuiko lenses that I've had tested. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.